That's a plane. No, it's a lot of birds. <gasps> it's migration season. So when it's time for birds to migrate, the weather is usually changing. So when they first feel that cold chill in the air, a chemical in their body gets set off and they go with urgency to know that it's time to migrate. So it's the same chemical signals that are in their need to try to find food or to try to find a mate. It's like a light bulb goes off and they're ready to fly. So behind me there is a map of the United States and all those little lines on it represent flyways. What's a flyway? A flyway is an area of air that a bird uses as it migrates. So way out in the east we have the Atlantic flyway. Just over my shoulder on the west coast, we have the Pacific Flyway. And right here in the very center, we have the Central Flyway. And this happens to be where Texas's flyway is. All the birds that come through Texas love it. And why? Because Texas is my great. Come on down, birds. Get it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So when birds are migrating, they do fly for a very long periods of time, but they do stop in several places to rest. But those places to rest are shrinking. That's one of the main reasons that so many migratory birds are now threatened, because there's a loss of land, loss of food, um, and there's more obstacles in their way as they are migrating. There are tons of things you can do to help migratory birds. One of the things you can do is by putting out food for them. They're making sure you have fresh bird seed or even um, like hummingbird nectar. Um, but you want to make sure that it's fresh. We don't want to try to give animals food that might be rotten or moldy. So if it's recently rained, you probably need to change all that food in your feeder so that way it's healthy and safe for those birds that are migrating. So with all the birds that we have on the planet, it might be kind of hard to relate bird, person, person, bird. How do they come together? Well, during migration season, usually those birds are flying around bugs. They are following the bugs as they migrate and they're eating those bugs. If we took away all the birds on the planet, we'd be left with millions, probably trillions of bugs. I'm talking big bugs like grasshoppers, locusts, and those bugs would eat the food that we eat, like all of our wheat, all of our grasses, all of our corn, our tomatoes, everything. Then you might think, well, I'll just eat a steak. There's always gonna be cows. Well, if there's that many bugs eating all of the plants, there won't be any food for the plant eaters to eat. So even just taking away even one species affects the entire system. So there's a very delicate balance and we need every species that is here, here. You want to get into birding? You can! You don't have to go and buy all the expensive books or all the, the gear for birding. Just simply learn a couple birds and then go outside in your backyard and just look for those few birds. Then if you still enjoy it, go to your local library and check out a book. That's what I did. I don't know everything about birds, I'm still learning. That's why they call me educating. So if you want to keep learning about birds and keep birding, and you still really enjoy it, after you've checked out that book at the library, go to your local nature center and just watch the birds. If you still enjoy it, maybe invest in a pair of, it's not super expensive binoculars, but one that's fairly decent. Then if you still really, really enjoy it and you're still learning and you're still actively trying to bird, that's when you want to invest in a really good pair of binoculars. But right when you're first setting out, you don't have to get everything right away. Just simply go out and enjoy the birds, and as you experience them, you'll learn more and more. So good luck.